Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 278. Page 278, and today is our lesson number 46. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem on the page, page uh, uh, number 35. It says, it says that uh, the inside of a rectangular carton is 48 by 32 by 15. So we have a rectangular box here. A rectangular box or rectangular cotton is no big deal and we are given the dimensions 48 by 32 by 15 so we have this rectangular box and we are told that we can place K identical cylinders K identical cylinders are placed upright in the box now this bit of information will come in quite handy here the fact that we are being told that the cylinders are uh, placed upright not uh, not on uh, not on the base they're not they're, they're standing straight they're not sitting flat all the cylinders and we are told that each cylinder each cylinder is 15 inches high but there you go each cylinder is 15 inches high and we are told the dimensions are 48 by 32 by 15 hence each cylinder sits straight up and the height of the cylinder is exactly matched by the height of the the, the depth of the rectangular box question simply is how many will fit how many will fit very simple very straightforward question so here's our box it looks something like this something to this effect and we are told that this is 15 inch high this is 32 by 48 something to like something like that and each cylinder the first statement tells us the first statement tells us that each cylinder has a radius of 4 but each, if each cylinder has a radius of 4 the cylinder being like this has a radius of 4 which tells us that the diameter of the cylinder is 8 and we know the height of the cylinder is 15 which is the same height as this one so the cylinder is going to fit right in here straight exactly and this is 15 inches just like the cylinder. So the cylinder is going to fit straight in and we are told that the radius radius is 4. The first statement tells us the radius is 4. Well if the radius is 4 the diameter is 8 which makes it our life easy. So we don't have to so we don't have to deal with the three dimensions now all we have to deal with is the two dimensional floor that is that is there. Uh, how many can be fit on the floor because the height of the cylinder is the same as the height of the height of the cylinder is the same as the depth of the box so we don't have to worry about the third dimensions let's just look at the floor. The floor looks like this. The floor we are told is 32 by 48. There you go, 32 by 48 or 48 by 32, same thing. And the diameter we just found out of the cylinder is 8. And wouldn't you know it, this is exactly, this is a multiple of 8. The 32 that we see here is the exact multiple of 8. We got 8, we have 16, we have 24 and then we have 32. This is 16. So it looks like we'll have four rows this way. And this is 48. 48 divided by 8 is 6. 48 divided by divided by 8. 48 divided by 8 is 6, which means we're gonna have six columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
Voila. So how many can we have here? There you go. And each, look, think of this as we are looking at the box from the top. This is the top view of the box. And there are, there, in, in it there are cylinders sitting here. There is one cylinder here, there is another cylinder here. They fit in perfectly, the eight, 8 inches and the 15 inch deep. Very simple. Since we have, since this is 6 times, 6 times 8 and this is 4 times 8. 8, eight being the diameter, 8 being the diameter. So therefore, we'll have six rows and four columns, or four rows and six columns, either way you like it, four rows and six columns, or six rows and four columns. The bottom line is, we will have 24 cylinders that will fit in there, six times four. The first statement does the job beautifully. The first statement does the job beautifully. Therefore, that's it, we're done with it, first statement works. Oh, I shouldn't have raised the damn thing. The first statement works, therefore the answers, A, D, B, C, E, since the first statement works, the answer we know cannot be B, C, or E. It's got to be either A or D. Let's look at the second statement. In the second statement, they tell us the six can fit along the length. Six cans fit along the length. Well, length being, length being 48, that's, that's the convention. The convention dictates the length is the longer side, and the width is the shorter side, the length being 48. Six of them fit in there, which means this 48 represents the diameter of six of them. Six of these cans will fit in there, right? Just erases. I shouldn't have. Six of them fit in here. So if you if you want to look at here, you can quickly show it here. Six of them fit. One, two, three. Voila. There are six cylinders sitting in there. And they're going this way, and then there are. This is going to be tough to do it this way. I'm not going to attempt it. I'm not going to attempt it because it's not going to come out very nice. So that's it. So if 48, if 48, if the length of the if the length of the box, which is 48, we know the length is 48. When we are told this, and we are told that six cylinders fit along the length. What they're basically telling us is that six diameters equal 48. If six diameters is equal 48. That implies that one diameter must equal 8, which implies that the radius is 4. Essentially, not essentially, it is the same information as the first information. The, this is the second summation, the exact same information as the first statement. And the first statement tells us that the radius is 4, from which we got the diameter 8. Here is the same thing in the second statement. What it boils down to is that they're telling us the fact that 6 diameters equal 48. If 6 diameters is equal 48, then one diameter must be 8. Which is the same statement, same information as the one in the first statement. So, if the first statement was enough to answer the question, so is the second one. The answer is D. The answer is D. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. The next problem that we're going to do. It's too ridiculous, it's too silly, it's too childish. I don't know why it is even in the book. Uh, perhaps they just wanted to fill the space. I don't know. Here we go. X minus 4 equals Z. Y minus X equals 8. And 8 minus Z equals T. Question simply is, what is Z? That's the question. What is Z? In the first statement they tell us, in the first statement tell us that x equals 7. Well, if x equals 7, the very first equation here tells us that x minus 4 equals Z. If x equals 7, it's just 7 minus 4 equals Z, which is 3. Z equals 3. The first statement, of course, is enough. A, D, B, C, E. No matter how simple the problem is, no matter how straightforward the problem is, I always make a point of writing this down, A, D, B, C, E. As soon as I finish working with the first statement, I make a point of writing this down, because this tells me what our odds are. Since the first statement works, we have raised our odds to 50-50. answer is going to be either A or D. If the second statement also works, then the answer is going to be D. If the second statement doesn't work, then it's E. And then it's A. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that T equals 5. 
1 right here, t equals 5. They are asking us what is z. The z appears right in this equation. And in this equation we know what t is. So we are going to use this equation right here, which says 8 minus z equals t, which we know is 5. You have to move things around, bring the z to the other side, and bring 5 to this side, and you will find that z equals 8 minus 5, which is the same as 3, which is exactly what we got last time. So second statement also works. That's it. Since both statements, since both statements by themselves are sufficient to answer the question, the answer is D. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.